All right, so first we're going to start with some historical figures. Everyone knows Michelangelo, probably the most famous of the Renaissance artists. Uh, what you might not have known is that aside from being famous for being a sculptor, a poet, an architect, he was also famous for the sheer quantity of work that he produced. It was said that he was so driven that he took no pleasure from food and drink and that he'd fall asleep in his clothing and sometimes even his boots. This is Nikola Tesla. So I work in tech and there's no one in tech that's more revered than this man. He invented the radio, the x-ray, alternating current, and a whole bunch of other things. In 1927, he came up with the idea for a handheld device where you could video chat with people at long distances. In other words, he made the, the or at least came up with the idea for the smartphone 100 years before Steve Jobs built it. So what do Michelangelo, oh wait, excuse me, and Dan Aykroyd uh, is our last figure. Um, one of my favorite comedic actors. If you haven't seen the movie Ghostbusters, you should go home and rent it. It's probably a little before some of your time, but great movie. So what do uh, Michelangelo, Tesla, and Aykroyd have in common? Well, all three of them have been widely speculated to be on the autism spectrum. So Dan Aykroyd actually has talked about his Asperger's at some length. So what does it mean to be on the autism spectrum? Well, one in 64, according to the last scientific study, are, or a more recent CDC survey says one in 45. So that probably means that someone you know, a loved one, a colleague, a friend, is on the spectrum. So I want you to first pause and just expand what you typically think of as someone on the spectrum. <clears throat> it's also exactly that, it is a spectrum. So everyone's experience with it is different. Um, people on the spectrum think a little bit differently and that gives them certain strengths and certain weaknesses or difficulties. Uh, for example, people on the spectrum are very good at spotting patterns and breaks in patterns. They're incredibly good at focusing intensely on one very specific subject for a long period of time. You know, I call you back to, to Michelangelo and his focus on his work. But there's also difficulties. So one of the big difficulties is that people on the spectrum have trouble reading social cues and interpreting them, which can lead to, to other difficulties. They also take comfort in repetitive behavior and sometimes have trouble with verbal communication. And because people on the spectrum process information differently, we have to teach them differently. <clears throat> Autism teachers break everything they do up into many, 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 many steps. And on every step that they take, they take copious amounts of data. So it ends up being thousands of data points each day that they're tracking. And it looks like this. So as you can see, it's an incredibly time-consuming, difficult, complicated process. And it's expensive. But I've been volunteering in autism and working in autism for 10 years, and I've seen the effect that it can have when it's done properly. It's been shown to be incredibly effective at helping kids mainstream back into typical classrooms and lead fulfilling, independent lives. And so what, uh, so what, uh, <laughs> so I started a company. The name of the company is Thread Learning, and what we do is we build a data platform for autism education. In other words, we take this and we turn it into this. Um, so it's a data platform that allows teachers to collect, analyze, and share student progress data. It saves teachers about 45 minutes a day, and it also speeds up the rate at which kids learn because it gives everyone access to high quality cutting edge curriculum, and it does automated quality control. It also gets parents involved in the process again. It coordinates care between outside therapists, school uh, teachers inside a school, and parents. 
So we actually know when a child has mastered a new skill and we can let mom and dad know. And whether you're on the autism spectrum or you're in this school here in Browning, everyone knows that if a parents are involved, kids learn better. So Fred Learning spun out of Cornell after they invested uh, in our company. We are working with the largest autism school in the state of New York. Uh, we're expanding to schools and school districts in three day, in three three states. Teachers use us about seven hours a day and, and like it a lot. Um, and we are currently uh, fundraising for uh, a public launch in May. So this TED talks about innovation and uh, everyone gets their innovation and their impetus for the innovation in different places. But for me, it came from a mission. And it's our belief as a company that uh, digital data is going to transform the way that we do autism education and change the lives of a lot of people. So it's our mission as a company to get 100% of the 1.7 million children in the United States on the autism spectrum onto digital data in the next 10 years. So I want you guys, hopefully today, you've learned a little bit more about autism and a little bit about where my innovation came from. I'd love you to take that awareness home, share it with your loved ones, uh, your friends, your family. Uh, if you have any questions at all about autism, uh, you know, I also know a lot about the tech world in New York, if that's something that uh, you have an interest in from a career perspective or, or just an interest in, feel free to contact me. Uh, if you have time or resources, I encourage you to uh, contribute to, to a mission that you care about. Thank you.